So Poonam, you are already working yes, sir. in Ministry of Defence right, and you have been a trader as well. Uh, yes, uh, sir. You were, you were trading in stocks. Have, in, uh, yes, sir. I have done job in Future First yeah. for one and a half years. There yeah. I was working as a trader. Okay. And uh, you did your graduation in biotechnology. Right, sir. Okay. So, it is a very diverse uh, uh, and path which you have taken from biotechnology right, to a sir. trader to a Ministry of Defense and now and the sir. APFC and uh, you are a law graduate as well. Yes, sir. So, what do you think uh, that uh, you, are you not decisive as to what is to be done in life or uh, is it uh, that you want getting, you know, want to gain more knowledge? Okay. No, sir, it's nothing about decisive. Actually, I was a district topper in 10th class. I'm from a rural background. There were only two options were given to me, medical or non-medical. I was very good at maths, so I took non-medical. I, I joined a good college, Delhi College of Engineering. I cleared IIT also. But after taking that stream by technology, I realized that this is not for me. So after the college, I was placed in a company known as Future First from the college itself. After one and a half years, then I decided to do law because I was interested in doing law. As soon as I finished the law, I gave this exam, I joined Ministry of Defense and there itself I'm working in legal section only. I voluntarily took that legal seat. Okay. Yes, sir. So you are in the legal section of Ministry of Defense? Yes, sir. I'm in AG branch. That is a nodal branch. Yeah, yeah. So I'm working there in disciplinary and legal matters. Okay. Right. And where the court martial uh, which have been conducted there or with the, you get those uh, reports or, or, or are you providing uh, the legal uh, uh, means the court cases which are being filed by the affected parties or affected soldiers or officers or you are countering that? Uh, sir, actually I am working with different civilians cases. Okay. Huh. So most of the cases are related to their pension, to disciplinary actions and on that we are fighting on behalf of government itself. Mostly cases are there in CAT then in High Court. So we represent the government. We have panel of advocates that are related to government only and we provide them the draft counter reply and from all like there are 27 line directors in Indian Army. So we collect the information of all court cases from there and this is a single, uh, like you can see we are a nodal branch. So we provide all the data to the advocate to fight in the court. Okay. Right, sir. And uh, what do you think that uh, the litigations which are going on at present in your ministry or in general? Right, sir. Are, can they be sorted out without going to the court? If the administrative action in first phase itself would have been taken, there would not have been many cases which are pending in the court. Means, what do you think that some are very frivolous and useless kind of a court cases, which is wasting so much of uh, hours of administration as well as the affected party? Yes, sir. in some cases, you can obviously say that, that uh, maybe some mediation or some arbitration, we can solve the cases. Uh, actually, I am uh, dealing in disciplinary cases also. So, second appeal comes to our office. So, ma in many of the cases uh, from major penalty, we shift it to minor penalty and sometimes we even uh, do away with the penalty. So, I think there are some cases which can be sorted out at the command level only. Hmm. But some cases like they are, uh, they have to be endorsed by DOPT. So, they have to be fighting in court only. Okay. You are residing in Delhi? Uh, yes, sir. And? Uh, I am residing in Gurgaon, sir. You are residing in Gurgaon. Right, sir. Okay. So, you are uh, commuting every day uh, yes, to sir. the Ministry of uh, Defense? Yes, yes, sir. You are in Army headquarters? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, you have taken the Assistant Provident Fund Commissioner exam. Yes, sir. And the posting can be anywhere. Yeah, and right, you are sir. married as well. Yes, sir. What 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 does your husband do? Yes, yeah, sir. He is a businessman. Okay. Right, so sir. how would you cope? Uh, suppose your postings, etc., is done away from uh, the uh, you can say the current setup. 
Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, I can say like three or four years back, it would, it might have been difficult for me because uh, I was born with a kid. Now he is four and five years old, and my husband business is set up to a great level. Like he has hired managers. Sometimes he just works from home and managing the things. He is he has showrooms of electronics and he deals in the service. So right now I am in the position that if I posted to anywhere in India, I can work. I see. And you belong to Haryana. Yes, sir. What do you think uh, that the stock trading and uh, what has really changed in India that the census has jumped to such a high level of 70,000, 75,000 yes, from 2008? Sir. What exactly has happened? And uh, and what do you think that something physically has happened, or it is a market sentiment which is which is uh, uh, driving the Nifty and the Sensex? Sir, I think there are many factors to it. Uh, as we can see, the demographic dividend is going on in our country. So many youngsters are uh, opening the dependent account. We can see even the report in last two years, even housewife and many youngsters have opened DMET account. And we can see property rates are at very high. So in property, you need minimum a uh, good amount of money to invest. In stock market, you can invest from like 500 in a SIP till a maximum limit. So it's very easy. Second thing, now it's everything is online. So you are sitting at home, you can invest in the stocks and everything. Third, sir, government is doing work like they are starting, uh, they have reduced the corporate tax. They are working for the, um, I can say, economy in a positive direction. So people have a trust over the economy of India. And recently we have um, like fifth, uh, fifth economy in the world. Uh, so I think people have a trust on India, in government of India. So they are investing and from uh, last you can say when uh, in December when the government won in three states they started a rally from like 60,000 and it is continued to 74,000 and now I think election and many things are the deciding factor for but there will be short term effect only because in long term we can see uh, like the average age is 29 right now in demographic dividend. It will get peak at 2041. So I think there is a lot of potential in Indian market. The Sensex will grow. Okay. So you are saying that the government policies and the sentiment is favorable for uh, the Sensex to grow. Right, sir. But do you think that on ground, the manufacturing and the services sector have grown that much in proportion to what the Sensex has grown? Uh, sir, we can say that manufacturing has not been done what was promised earlier. Like we can see the outcome of Make in India and other schemes. We are trying, but it's that data is saying like it's even 16 to 17 percent. We uh, right now we are in the manufacturing system, and for service sector, the major deciding factor is U.S. market. Their rate of interest is very high, and that's why Indian IT industry is not performing up to the mark right now. We can even see the prices of share, Wipro, Infosys, uh, they are not at their peaks, and the. But people believe that rate cut will happen in future and after that Indian IT sector will grow well and the stocks will perform. Okay. Do you have any idea that how much capital is now locked in mutual funds and this thing and how do we compare to the developed world? Uh, sir, I am not sure about it. Okay. Poonam, you have been working with Ministry of Defence yes, for sir. quite long now. Yes, sir. Have you heard of integrated theatre commands? Yes, sir. Please tell in brief. Okay. Sir, um, integrate like earlier, um, sir, it is to balance between the three naval forces, uh, the three Indian forces, naval, army and air, for force, uh, air force. 
earlier there was issue like in procurement in policies different things were going on in different forces so they decided to combine these integrate into integrated headquarters and form a post of cds which will be dealing with directly with mod and will be controlling all these so we three. already have this integrated theater commands in place uh not sir how many of them are being envisaged uh, i have no idea sir okay i have just uh, the idea of dma department of military affairs which is dealing with so it's it's integrated. a very recent thing integrated theater commands you have been yes, following sir. the news mm, yes sir okay now tell me defense about defense budget of india i mean what is how uh, what percent of gdp is it or you know what is the major chunk of defense budget going to and do you think there can be anything done, done related to that sir uh, defense budget is around 10% of the gdp and it's a very large amount obviously so major of uh, majority of the part is going towards procurement of uh, the defense equipments uh, like uh, fighter planes and uh, can you tell the percentages what percentage is salaries and pensions what is the percentage uh, i don't know you exactly don't know. sir okay continue please okay uh, so sir uh, things are going on like they are closing some offices in ministry which are not profit making like for example they have closed uh, military farms so they are closing those and from there they are shifting the budget towards procurement of equipments and more so and uh, what was okay can can we do anything with the subs, uh, the burden of pensions and salary burden because that forms and you know another yes, major sir. chunk of it yes sir sir uh, pension before 2004 it was ops now it's nps so in nps 14% government is giving 10% we are giving the part and it is invested in market only so i think government has reduced some burden of pension uh, but there are lot to do and uh, they are uh, there was a news that they are trying to uh, improve the provisions of nps by re reducing so their so you didn't mention the agniweed scheme will it you know help in reducing the burden pension o burden obviously sir this will reduce a lot of burden because okay. for 4 year in agniweed scheme they will take the soldiers for 4 years only and for 4 year they will be providing a lump sum amount at their retirement of which some part is even paid okay. by them only fair enough now let us shift to r&d yes sir i mean what is the status of defense r&d in india number 1 what are the key organizations which you know about and also tell you know how can it be improved because we have we have always faced that you know make in india in defense is the need of the r right now yes sir tell me sir i am not sure about it defense r and d you are not sure uh, no it. sir i have been never posted to that section okay so you do commodity trading as well uh, sir earlier i used to do when i was in future first i was trading in crude oil they posted me in the seat of crude oil okay so currently you are not doing any trading sir currently i am in a job where phone is not allowed okay so from 9 to 5 i cannot but take but you can do phone. that on your personal computer Ah uh, no, sir. Net is not there net related not there. to secrecy. So on the other side, tell me if government servants are allowed to do commodity trading at the first uh, no, place. Ah no, sir. They are not allowed to do. So what? What all activities are they allowed to do, and what all are you know out of their purview? Say anything. Like if you are earning from any other thing, be it stock, be it tuition or anything, you have to disclose it to the government, and you have to pay the tax over it. Even if you are taking a gift uh, of amount more than two thousand, you have to inform the government about it. So. suppose some government servant wants to invest in you know share market yeah. or equity simply is he or she you know eligible to do it yes sir because uh, in old pen, uh, in old tax regime there was a provision in under atc that you can save the tax by investing 1.5 lakh in mutual funds that are tax saving only mutual funds if directly one wants to invest in shares equities sir is it I, allowed i don't think so he is allowed you don't, you don't you're not aware no it is allowed investment is allowed you cannot trade okay sir right what you know what are the attractive features in in this apfc profile that you know bring you here because you are already working in a very stable kind of a job yes, and in a very good reputed organization so to say yes sir sir i always wanted to help the society i am from a rural background and i faced a lot of struggle in reaching here so i always wanted something to give to the society 
right now even i am engaged with an ngo human for human i work there for only for weekend but with a job which is 9 to 5 and with family responsibilities it is not possible for me to contribute to the society much but if i get a job in which my hobby can be done and i would love to serve the people no so don't you think i mean it's another government job i mean how will you serve people because you epfo works for the organized sector only but sir their salary is to the like the limit is 15000 only so they are the poor people which for which them they are working sometimes we heard that pf is not released okay PF- my last question have you heard of the ishram portal yes sir ishram portal tell in brief okay sir ishram portal is a portal to enroll the workers Uh, organized and unorganized both organized and no sir unorganized sector and sir uh, it is used it is beneficial especially for migrant workers like if someone moves from one place to another they'll be getting the benefits by registering over it and the epfo and other schemes they are planning to link through ishram portal okay fair enough <clears throat> so poonam tell me uh, you like teaching maths who yes, do you sir. teach maths So the kids only the NGO I was talking about. Okay. So I teach. You teach maths. Yes, sir. I How teach maths. How old are these kids? Ah, uh, sir, from sixth class to tenth class. Sixth class. Okay. So, uh, how do you you know uh, teach them? Uh, what is uh, what is that special thing or that you know uh, that you do? Because these are probably underprivileged kids. Yes, and sir. And they might not be very bright also. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, sir. I think my biggest strength is empathy. So, children are uh, they are really attached to me, and in special cases, I have been to home of the girls, especially girls whose parents were not allowing them to study. So, so let's say a parent asks you, "Okay, you are teaching trigonometry to kids. What is the use? Why are you teaching it? So, what okay. will you do?" Okay, sir, there are many things like complex number and others. People always think, "What is the use of it?" But till tenth, a basic knowledge of everything is given. That is required to maintain your IQ, to develop your IQ and other strengths also. And in trigonometry, like if some people are interested and if they will be going in engineering or other streams, so they have to do the maths. Uh, but uh, don't you think we should uh, teach? it's more practical stuff which will help them more like uh, you know teaching personal finance or teaching them uh, you know useful skills uh, which will help them survive for example maybe even carpentry plumbing mm-hmm. etc okay sir i think uh, the students i teach they are from really very poor background and the most important thing is they need financial stability in their life mm-hmm. so for any job like you have to be a graduate so i'm trying that only that i can teach them so they can be graduate and then decide what field they have to choose okay but uh, don't you think the economy is changing very fast nowadays degrees don't matter it's only about skills what do uh, sir i think there is a balance between both you should be having a degree not even a degree you should be having a basic knowledge of the things Uh, so schooling is also necessary and the skills are also necessary okay you like to watch cricket also uh, yes sir so uh, recently women's ipl has also started uh, yes sir so uh, th- but th- there has not been uh, that much great viewership uh, stadiums are also running empty uh, what do you think should be done to promote women cricket okay sir uh, this has been the case like from many years people are not very keen to watch the women cricket it's not only in india it's the worldwide same thing but r- now with the time people are starting because bcci has taken over the uh, women's cricket team also they are encouraging the people but still it's uh, i think many things are required the problem to according to me is that uh, you know women not don't want to see women cricketers or women sports men in general yes, they sir. also want to see the male sports only yes sir uh, in ipl you will see the 50% crowd is of women only yes, uh, but sir. in women's cricket there hardly any female uh, whatever audience is there it's only male audience yes sir i think it will take time sir like if you see some 10 years back uh, ipl thing or women cricket was not up to the mark uh, whatever we can see today but in few years it will take time for people to adjust with the women cricket also 
Okay. So, uh, but women's cricket, in, do you have any idea when did it start? When international, first international team was made? No, sir. No? No. Okay. So, uh, you know, the question that arises here is that now, uh, you know, there is a demand for pay parity. Yes, BS, sir. BCCI has taken some steps also in this regard. Other yes, sports bodies are also taking. But uh, when the, the gap in viewership is so high. Uh, yes, sir. Do you think it is uh, logical to give it? Sir, I think it is logical to give. It will like encourage the uh, women over the India to go in cricket field. First thing is, you can see in schools, colleges, even girls are not very keen to join the sports, especially cricket and uh, in this kind of sports, which is a group play. But if you, if uh, for example, IPL is a very positive step in this regard. So, have, do you play any sports? Uh, no, sir, not now. You have not played any sports in uh, your school time also. In school time, sir, I used to play uh -huh. uh, badminton, but that's very long ago. Okay. Okay. So, uh, you interestingly, uh, you know, change your career tracks and choose law. Yes. Any special motivation that you had for joining law? Uh, law, uh, sir. Uh, like I have some cousin brothers and sisters who are in the law field. Okay. So when I was younger, I was with them many of the times in holidays okay. and I was so fascinated so by their law work. excited you or you know, uh, increase your uh, you know, enthusiasm most when it comes to law, this area? Uh, sir, I have not worked as an advocate properly. But the while studying? Uh, by studying, sir, it was IPC. The, Substantive law. I was so very IPC has been modified recently. Yes, sir. So, do you remember like now which articles uh, or which sections have been replaced by which? Sir, there are many new sections. For example, there was one 420. Yes, now sir. Now, what is it? What sir, it has remember? been changed, but I don't remember the exact section. Okay. None of these you remember? Uh, no, sir. I know Achha, the changes you know they the have. the old ones? 124A? Uh, 124A. Uh, sir, I'm not sure right now. Sedition. Sedition. I was about to take a guess. Okay. And that has been changed Achha, now. Tell me what was the article for domestic violence? Domestic violence. Uh, sir, I don't remember right now. Okay. Okay. So, uh, since you like the IPC uh, and you must be also knowing about CRPC. Yes, sir. So, uh, tell me, do you... Uh, have, did you realize that uh, any fault in this uh, whole CRPC? Uh, sir, CRPC? earlier or the new earlier. one? Earlier. Sir, first thing is, it was very, it was based on the uh, very old rules. So, any specifics if you remember any, like any within CRPC? Sir, I can relate with the current one that they have changed the, if you are required to do medical earlier, there was a provision only sub inspector or higher policeman can give their but uh, consent. But right now, any police officer can give the consent for the medical. And uh, not particularly. Okay. So uh, recently there was this uh, case, you must have seen in news, there was a car, rich kid, uh, he killed some people on yes, the road. Sir. And juvenile justice board was involved because the kid was 17 only. Yes, sir. So can you tell me the role of uh, juvenile justice board in this case? Yes, sir. Sir, it is a case of Pune. So juvenile justice board was there because he was 17 years old. And uh, be, law, according to law, if a person in juvenile justice board is between 16 to 18, in negligence cases, the responsibility lies uh, basically in car accidents or accidents, the responsibility lies with the parents. So they have arrested the mother, father and grandfather as well. Juvenile justice board uh, is basically for the children to protect them from becoming like they have to safeguard the rights of children. Uh, arrested grandfather, grand, according to law, is grandfather also liable? Uh, no, sir. Parents have to be liable. But there was a news in newspaper only that uh, he has to given the keys. Huh. Okay. Anyways, continue. Good. Okay, sir. Uh, 
with the juvenile justice board uh, sir so juvenile justice board protects the who, rights of what children. is the constitution who are the who heads the juvenile justice board and how it is constituted like is it for a state level or city level do you have any idea uh, no sir i don't have any idea okay. uh, have you heard of this nalsa uh, national uh, one second sir Sir, I'm not sure about okay. it. I can give you. Do you remember Lok Adalat? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, tell me. Sir, Lok Adalat's are. Uh, it's a another kind of uh, from setup of regular court. Lok Adalat's are organized by the courts uh, on a specific date where many of the cases can be solved through mediation only or arbitration. Uh, they are the civil cases which can be solved through mediation and. Uh, you cannot if the judgment is given you cannot so appeal who, over who, it who is the judge in uh, lok adalat who can be a judge sir a magistrate or some other arbitrator can a retired judge yes sir so who appoints this uh, i would like a guess high court okay 